Hey everybody, how are you going out there in the real world? We are um, filming live from Springwood, uh, beautiful Springwood, hashtag 2777. And um, I've asked Stevie to join me, my right hand man. How are you going, Stevie? I'm doing well. That's good. So I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you had a good Easter. It was uh, an unusual Easter. So um, one where we were kind of in lockdown, but it's, um, it's all good. So welcome. I'd love to uh, see your comments, get some feedback. And in a moment, I'm actually gonna ask you a few questions. I know that people like to um, ask us questions, but I'd love to ask you some questions right now. So um, let me know if you're watching, let me know how your Easter went. So how did you go Easter time, Steve? What did we do? We had a good family day, family weekend, nice and relaxing, had some good food, some chocolate, and did a bit of cleaning around the house. A bit of spring cleaning? In autumn. In autumn. Very good. You forgot to mention you made um, a fantastic lamb roast on Sunday. Who else had lamb roast? Um, I think our Douglas did that for Debbie. Happy uh, birthday, Deb, to you. So uh, let me know if you're watching. Don't know at the moment if I can see that, but that's all good. So um, tonight I wanted to share some thoughts around the theme of in the secret place. So um, first of all, we're continuing the theme of um, plants, which I think um, started with Ali Campbell in a giving message. So um, <laughs> that was good. And um, so behind us, we have some hydrangeas, which are our fake flowers for the fake flower lovers, and some real Mexican sage for the, um, the people that love a real garden. So that's good. So maybe next week, I know uh, Ben did that last week as well, and Hutchins did it the week before. So um, we'll have to keep the uh, plant theme rolling. <laughs> that would be good. So. Um, I've asked Steve to uh, come and help me for a bit of moral support, but he's also in a moment going to build one of these babies, open it up and build the toy inside, which we could. Josh Keith said he had lamb roast too on Sunday, which is pretty cool. And Jill was saying, no, sadly, don't know what that means, but oh, no lamb roast. Okay. That's a shame, Jill, but that's all good. So, um, so what I'd like to ask you guys to do today is to answer these two questions. And the first one is, what do you think God is doing in the secret place right now? Obviously, um, God didn't cause this pandemic. God doesn't, I don't believe God sends sickness on the world like this, but God can work through it. So um, what do you think God's doing right now on the planet at the moment? What sorts of things would God be doing? And um, so I'd love to get your responses to that. We'll see if there's any um, comments. And my second question for you is, is what is God doing in your secret place right now? In other words, in your heart, in your soul, what is God saying to you? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. So um, have a think about that. So Stevie, grab that Kinder Surprise. Steve's gonna uh, help me with this object lesson right now. Who remembers Kinder Surprises? Give me a thumbs up if you love a good Kinder Surprise. Um, these were, you, you can uh, crack that baby open, Stevie. He's going to unbox it. Make sure you're on camera so we can see what you're doing. So uh, the good news is that Stevie's a manufacturing engineer, so he can now uh, put this toy together, which will be really cool. So um, here's the thing. <laughs> Tell me if that's good, Stevie. Is it good? He's enjoying that. Wow, what's on the inside? Oh, the little plastic thing, that's pretty cool. Hello to Cass and Ben, double thumbs up. And to Mika, very good. So, and I think Jane Bid might be watching as well, which is very cool. Clarifying what's most important. Okay, that's good. So, um, hopefully I'll be able to look at some of your comments in a moment. Part of the reason I asked Stevie to help me, he's going to build that little uh, object at the moment. Maybe you can try and do it on camera, Stevie, so you can see it. Um, 
Hey, Jamie Happel, good to see you. Hashtag 2777. Um, so here's the thing about the Kinder Surprise. The people who made that little egg, I guess you call it an egg, they, um, they knew what was inside it when they put it together. But we, when we buy it, we have no idea what's inside it. And I'm kind of glad right now that Stevie is doing this because look at these instructions, people. This is just too much for me to focus on when I'm trying to talk to you. Steve's a manufacturing engineer. I think he'll be good with it. So um, I guess the thing is the, the analogy I'm trying to draw is that God is often up to something. We don't see it, but he does. In the same way that the manufacturers of this egg know what was put inside it, but we don't. So um, let me read for you Romans 8, 28. I love this thought. You probably know this first really well. Paul says this. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. So God didn't, um, didn't send this pandemic, but God 100% can work for our good and his glory in the middle of it. Flinny wants the egg. Good. Will I post it to you, Flinny? That's good. We've got some more so we can share. Hey, do you add, hi to Troy. Good to see you. We've got some long answers, which I might read in a moment. So how are you going with that, Stevie? Let's work together. Whoa, you're so fast. <laughs> Very good. What is it? It's a dog. It's a dog from uh, Pets. Pets 2. Pets 2. Chasing the ball around. I think that could be Flinny's. That's definitely Flinny's. So, um, yeah, so here's my thoughts on this. Pastor Vic Vicky Simpson, who is a, a prophet who visited our church a couple of years ago, um, I've been watching some of her instant, her Insta live feeds and um, she's been talking about the fact that God is doing perhaps some divine paradoxes right now. In other words, things seem one way, but in fact they're the other. So, for example, right now things seem to be incredibly disconnected. But she made the point that she's actually connecting with more people now than she ever has. So... Um, that's kind of been my experience as well. There's a disconnect. We're not allowed to uh, actually touch each other. We've got to do that 1.5 social distancing. Steve and I aren't doing that right now. We've got to actually touch him. Um, but even though the world's in this sort of phase of disconnect, of course, because of technology, we've been able to connect with more people, such as I'm doing tonight. So I guess be looking for the divine paradoxes. What might God be doing? That is the exact opposite of perhaps what the world looks like is going on right now. So um, I want to grab that egg, Stevie. Anyone got anything like this in your home right now? Here's the thing. Uh, this is actually, I'm just going to give a confession. That actually is my egg that Christopher bought for me like two years ago. And I take forever to eat my Easter eggs. I don't know why. I kind of stashed them away and I forgot about that one. But that one kind of reminds us of the empty tomb of Jesus. So here's the thing. This is very relevant with the Easter story. We're Wednesday, three days after uh, we celebrated the resurrection of Christ. When I ask you this question, what was God doing between the moment when Jesus gave up his life, which we read about in John 19.30, so he gave up his spirit, and that moment when Mary Magdalene and Peter and John go to the tomb and they find it empty, what was God actually doing? And my point is that God is always doing something in the secret place. Of course, what God was doing was he was raising Jesus from death to life. And in doing that, it's probably the most important part of our whole Christian faith. He was proving that Jesus is the son of God. He was achieving forgiveness for our sins, which is incredibly important. He was proving that we have a king who is alive, so we don't, um, we don't worship a dead prophet, but a king who is alive. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Can I have a hallelujah for that? He was also proving that our physical death is not the end of our lives. Just as Christ was raised from death to life, we will be as well which is uh, good news, yes? It is, very good. 
And then he was proving uh, victory over death and sin. Hallelujah. So here's the thing. The Jews thought that one, the Jewish leaders were so excited that Christ was dead on the cross. They laid him in the tomb. And while people were probably celebrating that, God was working in a secret place, raising Jesus from death to life. So I wonder what God might be doing right now on this planet in spite of COVID-19. What do you think, Stevie? What are some of the thoughts you have about what God might be doing in the secret place during this time? You know, I think he's actually trying to get us to come back to him. Mm. Just actually to think about what we're doing and not be too concerned about our rushing around lives, but actually spend some time with people that are actually really important to us. And most importantly, our relationship with him. Yeah. Yep. It's definitely a time to really focus on who God really is, isn't it? Who God is in our lives. So um, here's some answers that you guys have um, uh, given in terms of what is God doing in the secret place. Pastor Ben Sattler, clarifying what's most important. That's a good one. It's uh, kind of a time to simplify things, isn't it, to work out what really matters right now, what really matters. Mika has said he just wants our heart, he just wants our hearts for us to turn to him. Yeah, God is showing me he wants me, he wants to be number one. To strip back, let go of all the stuff that isn't important, to declutter. Yeah, there's some great thoughts there. Stripping back, decluttering, that's some of the thoughts that I had as well. Um Flynn wants that egg. <laughs> Rach has just mentioned God works all things together for good, which is great. So um, Marg has said, Mark Herford has said, hi, Marg, hi to the Herford family. I believe God is taking us back to basics, as um, Stevie said, to discover what's really important. Yeah, they're all, they're all really great thoughts. Here's the thing, I reckon that God's talking to the whole world about mortality. What is really important? All of us have a life, just one life. We don't have several lives. And um, it's a reality we don't talk about much, but at some point, all of us will die. And I guess having a pandemic that sweeps the world has made people think, wow, that could be me. It's made people think about their own lives. I think it's also, some of you have said, this has caused us to be still and know God, to be still and know God. Psalm 46 verse 10 says that, be still and know that I'm God. I don't know about you, but I'm not really great at um, being still. I thought I was, uh, but I've learned that there's a lot to learn about that. Being still means we're not um, ticking off the to-do list. We're just realising it's just us and God. And... Sometimes I think we're afraid to be still because we perhaps used to running around, we're used to being busy, that makes us feel productive. But um, there is power in being still and knowing that he is God. So um, yeah, Troy's mentioned, take the world, but give me Jesus. That's a great song. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, more than ever, we need Jesus. It's a great reminder. Kathy Koopman said exposing the idols of materialism and self-sufficiency. Yeah, that's right. Kind of has reminded me as well that uh, God's in control. I'm not in control. Some of us like to think we're in control, but the reality is only he's in control. And you know what? Praise God for that. So um, a couple of other thoughts. Apparently the air pollution in France and in Italy has cleared up and the waterways in Venice are clearer than ever. So um, that's pretty amazing. It's almost like God is doing a deep cleansing of the earth. Hey. Mm, very much so. <laughs> I don't know how long that will last, but that's interesting. And I think someone's already, already said it's as if he's pairing us back, stripping us back to the essentials. Hey to Steph Hope. Hey, Steph. Good to uh, see you online. 
Steph's mentioned, um, I think he's reminding me of his will for my life and of his sovereignty. Talking about control again. Yeah, really good. Bob says God's setting up the beginning of the end. <laughs> well, I knew someone would make that comment. Um, could be. Who knows? Only, only um, God knows when the end, the end, end will come. But um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Definitely the, the beginning of the end. Maybe, maybe. So, um, just want to encourage you to think about that and wrap up in the next couple of minutes. But I also want to ask you that second question: What has God been doing in your secret place, in your heart? What are your thoughts on that, Stevie? What's God been saying to you? Uh, personally at the moment it's just a real time that to actually refocus on him mm. to to get our relationships right with him and with those that are really close to us so that and obviously as we spend more time because we're in ISO um, we are doing <clears> that we actually have time to get close to one another and actually talk things through that you normally may not have time to do yeah Family time, time, mm. time to resolve. What are you trying to tell me, Steve? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, he says. Yeah, it's, um, for me personally, um, I think God's been reminding me that everything starts in him, finishes in him. He holds everything up. It's all about him. It's funny that we need to be reminded of that, but we can become so busy that we forget that simple truth, that it's actually all about Jesus. It's all about the resurrected life. It's all about Christ in us. It's all about what God wants to say to us. And I want to remind you in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10, that Paul writes that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love him. That's us. And these things are God has revealed to us by his spirit. So I believe right now that we will have spiritual insight into what God is doing. And um, that's pretty exciting to know that even though everything looks bad on the surface, stuff is happening, tragedies are happening, people are dying, people have lost their jobs, people are in lockdown. But I just want to encourage you today um, that God is working behind the scenes, doing incredible things that only God can do. How good is that? Mm. And I want to encourage you to believe, just like Paul promises in 1 Corinthians 2, that God has given us spiritual eyes and ears and by his spirit we can see some of those things. So that's pretty exciting. Kathy Murray's mentioned preparing us for revival. Yes, amen. They... Um, they, of course, said that um, after the bushfires um, and after the drought, that it would take, you know, maybe 10 years for the um, Borogamba Dam to fill up. And don't quote me on this, but in a few weeks, it was at what capacity was it at? That's 75%. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So the experts predict 10 years. God, we, we all prayed, right? It rained and God filled that dam up. So who knows? what God might do right now in this in this season. So, um, yeah, I guess the thing that God's been doing in my secret place is he's been teaching me more about his grace, his incredible grace. And that's probably another, another message, another time, but wow, God's grace truly is amazing, like the hymn says. So, um, let me just finish with one scripture. I've gone over time. Whoops, Daisy. Um, hey to Simon Noble, good to see you. Uh, I wish I could see you guys. By the way, I miss all your lovely faces. I can't wait till we're all together again. I seriously miss all of you. Let me um, let me read uh, Psalm ninety-one verses one to two, and then I'm going to ask Steve to uh, close in prayer for us. So. I'm sure many of you have been quoting this psalm for many, many years. It is an incredible uh, psalm to read, to meditate on at the moment because it talks about the promise of protection from pestilence and plagues, so pretty pertinent right now. But hey to Debbie D, good to see you. Happy birthday for Sunday. So um, 
Let me read this for you. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. So there's a promise. The writer of Psalm 91 says, if you dwell, if you live in the secret place of the Most High, that you can rest, you can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, that's kind of old English. But what it is, is what it's saying is if we will just trust God, sneak into, like it says in Matthew 6, 6, go into that private place and pray and trust him. You know what? He's got it covered. If you're worried about your job, if you've lost your job, can I encourage you, first of all, we're praying for you, we love you, we believe the best for you. But can I encourage you in this season to draw close to God and choose to dwell in that secret place and let God cover you with his wing. Let him provide for you. Let him sustain you. Let him protect you. Let's, let's make this a season where we draw into the secret place of God and get to know him better than ever. Amen. Let me just read Jane Beard's comment. God speaks through dreams and visions. He spoke to me in a dream the other night that challenged me. Wow, that's cool. I'd like to uh, have to give you a buzz this week and find out what that was, Jane. And Troy said, God can turn things around in an instant. Amen. He can. That's right. He absolutely can. So um. Hope that encourages you tonight, um, guys and girls. Hope you um, have been able to spend a bit of extra time this week with God. We encourage you this Sunday to join us online for Google Meet before church at 9 o'clock. Be a chance for us all to see each other's faces and to pray together. And then definitely join us for uh, church online at 9.30 on Facebook or YouTube. So, um Georgia was excited to see Steve. Hey, Georgia, how you doing? You know what? I think I miss the little kids the most. Oh, my goodness, I miss them so much. <laughs> and I think this guy does too. So I um, hope that encourages you guys. Let me uh, ask Stevie to pray for you and then we'll close. Mm. Thanks, Steve. Loving Dad, thank you that we can just think about tonight, about those secret places in our lives where you're working, you're showing us what you want, and Lord, you're just teaching us more about you every day. Help us to just really be with you in those secret places and not be afraid to be there with you. Thank mm. you, loving Dad. Mm. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I'm going to end this live video now. It's uh, great to catch up with you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, let's keep this conversation rolling. What is God doing right now? I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to um, message me, Facebook me. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to chat to some of you in um, by Facebook Messenger or um, FaceTime or Google Meet at some stage in this coming week. But bless you. We'll see you again on Sunday, Church Online. All right, bless you. Good night. <laughs>